Hi and welcome to WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week and to sharing some practical security tips along the way. I'm your host and all-around security professional, Corey Nockreiner, and this is the episode for the week starting March 31st, 2014. As usual, I'll cover three security stories this week, so let's start with Microsoft's upcoming patch day. According to their advanced notification this week, next Tuesday is patch day and Microsoft plans to release four security bulletins. The bulletins will cover flaws in Windows, Internet Explorer, and a couple of their Office packages, and they rate two of them as critical. I'm guessing the Internet Explorer update contains the final fix for the zero-day flaw we mentioned last month. While we're on the subject of Microsoft news, there's also a very cute story about a five-year-old hacker that discovered a security vulnerability with Microsoft's Xbox One. Apparently, when he is trying to log into his dad's account, he got the password wrong, and then Microsoft asked you for a password reminder question, and he entered all spaces, and entering all spaces allowed him to log into his dad's account. Now, they reported this vulnerability, and Microsoft is actually fixing it, and they even credited this five-year-old hacker with finding the flaw, so I just thought it was kind of an interesting Microsoft-related story. The second story this week is news of the NSA weakening yet another encryption algorithm security vendors use. A couple months ago we talked about how one of the algorithms RSA used seemed to be weakened by the NSA, specifically the dual ECDRBG algorithm. Well this week Reuters had a story that shared that another aspect of RSA's dual elliptical curve algorithm has been weakened or was weakened by the NSA. And it has to do with something called the extended random extension that you can use with this algorithm for websites. Now RSA is kind of admitted that they should have been more skeptical and look more closely at some of the algorithms the NSA submitted, and they say that this particular algorithm isn't really used much by their customer. But it is very sad to see that a government agency is weakening the security encryption algorithms we actually use for industrial commercial products. This is one of the things I hate most about the NSA stories. Again, while in some cases you might argue that governments need espionage agencies, the fact that they're weakening security for everyone, potentially even allowing criminals to crack these algorithms, is very, very sad indeed. For the final story, I'm going to share a little bit of WatchGuard news. At the Interop Networking Show in Vegas this week, WatchGuard announced our new APT blocker. You all have heard me talk a lot about advanced persistent threats, and among other things, these advanced threats leverage zero-day malware. Malware that has been changed using various techniques like polymorphism, uh, packing or crypting, or even customizing the malware in some way in order to evade signature-based antivirus virus solutions. In long story short, WatchGuard has found out that about 88% of the malware that these sorts of systems scanned is unique. It's never been seen before by a signature-based solution, and therefore traditional antivirus solutions are not very good at catching the zero-day malware. APT Blocker fixes this problem. It's essentially a cloud-based virtual sandbox. We submit many different types of files, whether they be executables, documents, or even Android uh, installer packages to our cloud-based system, and we virtually execute them in a, a sandbox that emulates a normal victim computer. And based on different behaviors, we can actually detect zero-day malware. In fact, one of the things our system's really good at is detecting some of the evasions advanced malware try to use to trick these sorts of virtual systems. They do things like detecting virtual environments or trying to delay execution in order to try to bypass some of the automated virtual systems out there. But our solution detects this, it can actually override it with a little technical Jedi mind trick and continue the analysis. In any case, I just wanted to let the world know about APT Blocker. If you're a WatchGuard customer, when we released 11.9 
of our XTM firmware, APT Blocker will be available to you. And by the way, we'll include a 30-day trial for it when we release XTM 11.9. Well, that's it for this week's traveling episode. I'll be on the road in Asia next week as well, so the episode may be coming a little later, but that's the last week of travel. In any case, if you'd like more information or references to other stories, be sure to check out the blog post associated with this video. And you can also follow me on Twitter. I'm at SecAdapt, or follow WatchGuard at WatchGuardTech. Thank you for watching, and here at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you.